Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. Today I'm going to further explore the armory of Battletech and get into some lore and tactics. There's not really any structure to this video, I will just be highlighting some of the less common inventions that I think are relevant to the eternal arms race of the stars. To start, I'm going to go with sensor upgrades. The C3 command unit and slave unit were originally intended for reconnaissance mechs and vehicles. The C3 command unit, also known as the C3 master computer, is the central hub of a C3 network and allows linked units to share radar and targeting data on the Lance or company levels. As well as serving to share the linked Lance and company targeting data, the C3 command unit also duplicates the function of a targeting acquisition gear and can designate a target for air four homing missiles as well as semi-guided LRMs. Another important piece of technology is the Beagle Active Probe. It is a suit of enhancement technology that when attached to general electronic sensors enables the equipped unit to detect and classify other battlefield units whether they are camouflaged or even shut down with the exception of conventional infantry. In addition to the ability to detect and classify targets at a longer range, the Beagle includes a memory unit that records the events of a battle and allows for later playback. This includes the ability for the user to refight the battle, making different tactical decisions which are analyzed and then implemented by the system, allowing for the results and the consequences thereof to be observed so that it is one part black box, one part combat data for further use. Caseless autocannon ammunition was developed by the Federated Commonwealth in 3055 with the intention to provide more ammunition to the front lines. Instead of a standard metal or plastic shell casing filled with propellant, the caseless autocannon round has propellant packed around the projectile. This resulted in lighter autocannon rounds, allowing a mech's autocannon magazine to carry twice as many rounds. This feature was particularly useful for larger bore autocannons, much like those used on the Hunchback. Though the caseless rounds were effective most of the time, in some notable cases they would jam the mech's ammunition feed system, leaving the mech warrior in a fight without their biggest gun. The other problem is, is that there wasn't a feed system that could handle both caseless and standard ammunition. This meant that the autocannon capable of firing caseless rounds could only fire caseless rounds. Given the relative scarcity of such ammunition, that the cannon couldn't use ammunition from captured other armies, the caseless capable autocannon remains very rare on the battlefield. One of the more obscure missile systems is the Improved Advanced Tactical Missile System, or the IATM for short, which was developed by a faction known as the Society from 3054 to 3070. Like the Advanced Tactical Missile System that it's based on, the IATM system uses a variety of ammunition types and includes an advanced targeting option. Unlike the standard ATM, the IATM uses Streak's SRM style guidance system to improve accuracy. Unlike the Streak system, however, the IATM can use indirect fire. The IATM can use three types of ammunition available to the standard ATM, but it also has two additional ammunition types that are restricted to the IATM alone. These two special munitions are the improved magnetic pulse ammunition and improved inferno ammunition. There were many developments in armor throughout the Battletech timeline. One of the more interesting developments that I think doesn't get enough recognition is the Hardened Armor Project. Its goal was simple. Use a thicker armor type that uses multiple overlapping plates to provide additional protection against enemy fire. Though capable of diverting more damage than standard armor, the increased number of armor plates and their lack of flexibility makes any unit employing it more difficult to pilot and can affect the speed as well. In fact, the hardened armor is so heavy that it cannot be mounted on hovercrafts, VTOLs, or wiggycrafts. The development of the hardened armor began in 3045 with the Federated Commonwealth. Though the prototype armors entered service in 3047, the multiple drawbacks of the armor prevented widespread adoption. The clan invasion increased pressure on manufacturers to create viable hardened armor, but despite their best efforts, creating armor that provides increased armored protection without compromising performance remains impossible. One of the factions to put more effort into this development was Clan Ghost Bear, who sees several examples of hardened armor and their science and technician casts have created their own version of this armor. However, to the bear's dismay, the heavy plates precluded the armor from being used on Omnimex, 
This means that only standard battle mechs can benefit from the increased armor protection. By 3090, the armor would enter limited mass production, becoming more widespread by the 32nd century. Another interesting development was reactive armor, sometimes called blazer armor, a type of specialized armor that uses a series of microscopic explosions to reduce the effects of explosive weapons fire like missiles, artillery, and mortars. When these weapons hit a unit with reactive armor protecting the area, the damage is reduced by approximately 50%. The microscopic explosives embedded in the armor will redirect the force of the weapon away from the protected unit. This force redirect also reduces the armor-piercing effects of tandem charge missiles, armor-piercing autocannon ammunition, as well as battle mech taser spikes. Though effective against missiles and artillery, this armor is no more effective than standard armor against other weapon types and physical damage. In addition, there were several cases of lucky weapons fire that initiated an armor explosion, stripping the reactive armor away from the protected location, leaving the unit extremely vulnerable. Another drawback that prevented it becoming more widespread was its bolt. Reactive armor occupies as much space on a channel as standard Fyro fibrous armor, but only provides as much protection as standard mech armor. When referring to armor, one has to mention endosteel. Originally developed by Terran scientists in 2487, endosteel was designed specifically for use in battle mech skeletons. Using zero-g manufacturing techniques that uniformly mix high-density steel with lower-density titanium and aluminum, this process produces a metal twice as strong per unit of weight as the standard skeleton materials, thus having the weight of a chassis, but an increase in overall bulk. The orbital facilities that produce this weight-saving chassis were prime targets during the first succession wars, rendering the technology extinct in the inner sphere outside of the halls of Comstar by the end of the second succession war. However, thanks to the Helm Memory Core and examples from the advanced mechs Comstar developed, the Draconis Combine regained the ability to produce endosteel by 3035, with the other successor states quickly following suit. The clans, however, lost the technology for some time. However, they eventually rediscovered it, and overall refine the process, having the bulk compared to Star League era endosteel. While the weight savings for endosteel are greater than those saved by Fyro fibrous armor, its use is hampered by the extremely low number of orbital factories in existence, significantly driving up costs due to low availability. Another important note is that it, it makes up the skeleton of a mech, which means that adding it to an existing mech generally requires lengthy factory refits and in general makes field repairs more difficult than standard skeletons. And finally, a jump jet upgrade, the Partial Wing. First designed by Clan Jade Falcon in 3061 and entering mass production in 3067, the Partial Wing system offers increased jump capability comparable to the improved jump jet system, while also increasing the rate of heat dissipation. This is not to be confused with land air mech concept. The Partial Wing system is a fixed wing system that allows a mech to glide an additional 60 meters while using normal jump jets. In addition to its large surface surface area, it allows a mech to more efficiently radiate excess heat. The technology was later adapted for use in proto-mechs by Clan Blood Spirit starting in 3063 and entering mass production for proto-mechs in 3070. That concludes my Armory 2 video. This was a lot of fun to make and I hope that you guys enjoyed finding out about some less than common tech that was developed in the Battletech universe. As always, if there is something that you'd like me to research and make a video on, please leave a comment below and I will start looking into it. I know I'm not making videos at the rate I originally promised, but I'm hoping that the improved quality of these videos will help make up for it. I'd also like to thank you guys for helping me get to 10,000 views on this channel. As long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making videos on the Battletech universe.